Hello, and welcome to module five of setting up a journal with OJS 3.0, user dashboard. Most of the work we do in this course takes place in the dashboard, and it contains many important sections and elements. In this video, I'll introduce you to those elements and give you a general orientation to the interface. We begin on the journal's main page. In the top right-hand corner, click on Login and enter the credentials for the account you created in Module 4. Logging in redirects you to your account's OJS dashboard, which should look a lot like this one at first. The dashboard is composed of a thin static navigation bar along the top of the page and a static side navigation bar along the left that create a frame around a dynamic window with section tabs and content that changes based on what part of the dashboard you're looking at. We'll go through the dashboard systematically, beginning with the top navigation options and then working our way down through the left. In the top left, you'll see the name of the journal for which you've created this account. If you have multiple journals, you can use the expansion arrow to switch between them. We next see the language of the page, and then a link to view the journal site. This link redirects you to your journal homepage. Finally, there is the username. Hovering over your name activates a drop-down menu of options to view your profile or log out. Click on View Profile. This section is where you'll be able to input and edit all of your private and public personal information. This section is covered in depth in Module 6. Note the different tabs along the top of the page that indicate different facets of this section, and the Help button, which opens a side panel with information about the page that you're on. Moving along to the left sidebar navigation, our first tab is the Tasks tab. Clicking on this opens a pop-up that lists all tasks that have been assigned to you. We'll cover what tasks are and assigning them extensively in the Editing a Journal with OJS 3.0 course, so I won't go into detail on them here. Just know that if you have them, you'll be able to view them here. You'll note that my Tasks tab currently has a zero beside it, but my pop-up shows an item. The number indicates unread tasks. If I were to mark the task as unread, by selecting it and clicking the Mark New button, my task number changes. I can also mark the task as read or delete it. The Submissions tab is where you'll manage submissions to the journal. This is another section that is covered in depth in the Editing a Journal course, and it does not require any setup. In brief, the My Q tab contains all active submissions that are specifically related to you. These can be submissions you need to assign to a member of your team, submissions that have been assigned to you to complete a task on, and submissions that you may have made to the journal that are being processed. You can create a new submission by clicking on New Submission. The All Active tab is only visible to editors and administrators and allows me to find any active submission in the system. Archives show all articles that are no longer in the editorial workflow, meaning they have either been published or declined. The Issues tab is another editorial function that will be covered in the Editing a Journal course. This section has two parts. Future Issues is where editors create, manage, and publish in-progress issues of their journals. Back Issues allows you to review and edit issues that have been published. Hovering over the Settings tab expands it into four sections. Each of these sections are covered in different modules of this course, and most of the work we will be doing in this course happens under this tab. Journal settings are the topic of Module 7 and is where we'll input contextual metadata to describe your journal and its policies. Website settings are the topic of Module 8. This is where we'll customize the physical appearance of your website, generate some content, and explore some other features that can be included in your website, such as archiving and plugins. Workflow settings are covered in Module 9, and this is the section in which we'll configure the editorial workflow of your journal, 
including file management, various guidelines, requirements, and deadlines for different roles, as well as email templates. Distribution settings are the topic of Module 10 and contain settings related to search engine indexing, payments, permissions, and licensing details for publication. Users and Roles is where you'll manage registered accounts made for your journal and the roles and permissions associated with those user accounts. This section is covered in more detail in Modules 11, 12, and 13. The Tools section is where you can deploy certain plugins to pull different types of data out of OJS, as well as where you can access embedded reporting and statistics on your journal. These topics will be covered in Module 14 of this course. And that concludes our whirlwind orientation of the OJS 3.0 dashboard. As I'm sure you've noticed, there are a lot of elements working together within the system to accomplish different functions. The modules of this course reflect this interoperability by building on each other as they walk you through the step-by-step -step process of developing your journal. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next module.